So Michael Edwards is back at Liverpool, or at least he sort of is anyway, because this is very much a different role he's taking on this time around. And that's because Fenway Sports Group have confirmed that Edwards has been appointed their CEO of football. But what does that all mean for Liverpool? Well, I thought I'd jump on and go through this really important news and talk about the consequences of it and maybe examine how that will affect Liverpool going forward. And I think the best place to start really is to say that this is actually a massive coup for FSG to get Edwards back in the fold. I say that because there's been so much interest around him in the years since he left Liverpool. He did such a good job, didn't he, as the, the sporting director at the club. He had a few roles before that, before eventually taking the reins as sporting director. And the, the job he did in terms of revolutionising how Liverpool approached transfers and bringing in Jurgen Klopp as well, of course, I think that was had a, a huge influence in terms of his reputation. And he was widely known as one of the best executives in world football, really. And for that reason... No surprise that other clubs have tried to get him in to recreate what he did at Liverpool. Now, he turned down offers from Chelsea and Manchester United, which is, I'm sure, all Liverpool fans will be really pleased to hear that. And I'm sure, you know, that was partly down to, to some loyalty to Liverpool in terms of, you know, he'd spent a lot of time there and, and obviously has a lot of affection for Liverpool Football Club. But I also think that part of it was because he wanted to maybe do more. when he, If he was to come back to football, he, he wanted to do, take on a role that was a bit more meaty, something he could really get his teeth stuck into. And that... Is what he's really been offered by FSG this time around. Now, in terms of his departure from Liverpool, you remember he left in in May 2022, and it, you know there was a lot of sort of you know speculation at that time at why he would leave after you know having had so much success at Liverpool and achieved so much. And he, but I think you know reports at the time suggested, and very much my understanding as well, that there was you know part of that was down to yes, he felt he'd achieved everything in the role he had, but also there's maybe. A little bit of conflict there between him and Jurgen Klopp. Now, you know, it, it's known really that as Jurgen Klopp got more success at Liverpool and did better, that his power in, in terms of influencing recruitment decisions very much increased. Now, that wasn't the case when he first came into the club. Uh, you know, Michael Edwards and his recruitment team were very much in charge of that, even though it was a, a collaborative thing that they worked together to make those decisions. You know, it, it was more balanced in, in in the start of things rather than later on when Klopp had got that success, maybe had a little bit more power to wield. I think a good example of this is the Mohamed Salah signing. Now, you'll have all read the stories uh, from a few years ago when, when Salah proved to be such a, a roaring success at Liverpool that, you know, Jurgen Klopp almost had to be convinced to make that signing that, you know, Edwards and his team came with the data and said, look, uh, you know, one of the other players they were looking at, for example, is, is Julian Brandt and, and said, look at Mo Salah here, look at his numbers. We think this guy could come to the Premier League and be a, a, a huge success and could score a lot of goals. And obviously, Jurgen Klopp eventually accepted that advice and, and he publicly admits that, he, you know, he had to be slightly convinced on that front, but was obviously very glad that he did with because he ended up with one of the best players in world football for the, for the next few years. So, you know, that shows you really that it was a really, you know, it was balanced between the two very much at the start of the relationship. But as I say... As Jurgen Klopp brought more trophies and success, maybe the power sort of lent towards him slightly. And I do look at maybe, you know, the, the, the Thiago Alcantara signing is one that always strikes me as one that maybe an Edwards wouldn't like to sign off with his age profile, his injury record. Um, we, you know, was he always a, a very good fit for Liverpool style of football? Whereas Jurgen Klopp has always spoke spoke about Thiago Alcantara extremely highly. And for me, the move from the Salah signing to the Thiago signing maybe just underlines that slight power shift that Liverpool had seen in terms of recruitment decisions and part of the reason why Edwards was maybe a little bit dissatisfied and wanted to move on and, and, and try new things. Uh, one thing I would say about that is when I talk about Klopp getting more power around transfers, I would argue that it was arguably you know worth indulging. I mean, you look at everything he's achieved since, you know, and even this summer I think is a good example of the fact that Klopp was worth indulging. I mean, you look at the Wataru Endo and Alexis McAllister signings and tell me that they are not money ball signings or incredible pieces of recruitment. Uh, the, the price is paid for both those players relative to the performances they put in, put in on the pitch. You know, yes, Liverpool, it's a good move to get Edwards back, but I would say that Liverpool have been really strong without him in terms of the recruitment and that Jurgen Klopp, as I say, maybe it was worth giving him that little bit of extra power, you know, particularly with the way that this season's panning out, he could sign off in the best possible way and that would ultimately justify the decision. But as I say, I think for Edwards, seeing that power eroded in terms of his own role was maybe a factor in him leaving, but there's not going to be any problem this time around and that is because obviously he comes back in a, in a role that's even above the sporting director role that he used to have and I think that's been an important factor really in him, in him wanting to come back and I think it's testament really to his relationship with FSG as well that even though there was maybe some 
conflict before he left last time around that they've really stayed on good terms and that they've been so willing to to want to get him back and I think part of that you know part of that good relationship is the fact that he's you know he's not constantly being in the media talking about things as he I mean I read a report uh, in the Boston Globe uh, last week that said that, that one of the things FSG really prize about Michael Edwards and this really makes sense to me is that you know he doesn't try to f- try to further his own interests in the media and he's very much not that ki- kind of of character is he very much keeps himself to himself not one to to give out a lot of interviews that's that's for sure and I'm sure that will still be the way now that he's this CEO of football at FSG now in terms of that role and and what that encompasses what's going to be expected of him going forward I think the short-term concerns at, at, at Liverpool are quite obvious the first port of call really is to get a sporting director in I think we all know who that's going to be it's Richard Hughes who was previously at Bournemouth he's going to leave Bournemouth at the end of the season and then we'll, we'll rock up at Liverpool. We expect his, his appointment as a sporting d- director to be confirmed before the summer. But that, that is the expectation that Michael Edwards will install someone in his old role. And that is someone he knows well in Richard Hughes. And then, of course, the next port of call after that is to then bring in a manager to replace Jurgen Klopp. The, the most difficult task of all. Now, FSG statement touched upon this, that putting in a new football operations element will be, will be a big part of of Edwards' role and in terms of who that might be we obviously know and it's my understanding as well that Xabi Alonso is the clear front runner obvious reasons for that with the incredible success he's having at, at Bayer Leverkusen and how well he's doing there and of course his ties to Liverpool that emotional element you can't rule that out completely though I would say there is competition for Alonso and if he's not the one they can get over the line definitely interesting Ruben Amarim and the work he's done at Sporting Lisbon uh, doing a great job there again you know with a, with a budget which he's sort of exceeding expectations there as well so he's very much going to be on the radar as well but that of course is a a really crucial part of what Edwards has been brought in to oversee. But beyond that, and I thought a really interesting line in FSG's statement actually that uh, that I have here, which talks about what his role is going to be, is um, supporting the growth of FSG in global football through additional investment and acquisition. Now, that essentially means that that Liverpool clearly are, are looking to to expand, or FSG are looking to expand the amount of clubs they, they, they have in their in their portfolio, football clubs they have in their portfolio, and that, that Edwards is going to be the one to, to, to look out for, for potential investment opportunities. Now, that that in fact, Edwards actually says himself in the statement that that was a, a big reason for him wanting to come back because he, he knew that he would have this fresh challenge involved. He said, as such, one of the biggest factors in my decision is the commitment to acquire and oversee an additional club growing this area of their organisation. So he's obviously massively invested in the idea that Liverpool are going to go to this multi-club model. And I I think that kind of comes as a little bit of a surprise, I must say, because of of previous quotes we've had from Billy Hogan. He's been asked about that in the past, actually, about whether that would be something FSG would be interested in. And again, I've got the quotes here. He says, For certain clubs, multi-club ownership makes sense. It's part of their strategy. I think those strategies actually vary based upon what those clubs might be trying to accomplish. But he does finish the quote with... But from our perspective, at the time being, we're focused on what Liverpool is doing. Now, that is interesting to me. You know, has Edwards influenced things enough? Were they so desperate to get him back that they were willing to be open to this idea of running a multi-club organisation? That is very interesting that that has been the, the key element of him coming back. And that's something he's going to oversee. And I think, you know, you look around, it's very much something that's taking hold of football at the moment, isn't it? There's a few sort of examples of multi-club models at, at Manchester City, obviously the biggest one, or City Football Group. I think they've got... 13 clubs under their umbrella and they're really using that to to you know to to huge success really in terms of the recruitment parking certain players at clubs within their football group and then getting them ready to to come to the jewel in the crown which is always going to be Manchester City and I'm sure from that perspective it'll be handy for Liverpool but there are other examples where maybe it's not going so well I look at 777 partners who are now looking to to buy Everton obviously there's been some horror stories around them in terms of how things are, are working out and, and obviously Chelsea with their blue co group that 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 it has recently purchased Strasbourg as well the French side um, their fans are not particularly happy about essentially being a feeder club for Chelsea which you can you know for an historic club you can absolutely understand why that's the case the one thing I would say is that I have no doubt if Liverpool do go down this route and it very much looks like that's going to be the case that it would be good for Liverpool but I think there's going to be a, a really interesting debate around whether that is good for football it's in terms of the long term on that as well actually there's going to be FIFA and UEFA have spoken about in the past that they are really looking at this 
you know, the effect it has on football, whether it's bad for football, whether they have to legislate against it in any way or, you know, how they control clubs, various clubs who are competing in similar competitions. For example, if Girona get to the, the, the Champions League this season, as will be expected in Spain, you know, do they come up against Manchester City? Is that a conflict of interest? That is something that, that UEFA and FIFA are looking into. And something Liverpool, if they do go down this route, or FSG rather, um, is, is something they're gonna they're gonna have to really sort of examine and, and be careful around. Because if you, UEFA and FIFA have essentially rule this out, then the whole part of the reason, or a big part of the reason for Michael Edwards coming back, is is going to be blown out of the water. So that's a, a, a really interesting one. And, Another aspect to this I actually want to touch on as well before I finish up is it'd be interesting to see what this all means for, for Mike Gordon. Now, he has very much been in the FSG ownership group, the, the main number one link really between Boston and Liverpool, the one who's been most concerned with, with FSG's football uh, interest in Liverpool. And he's been the main link to, to Jurgen Klopp and, and previously Michael Edwards when he was the sporting director. Now, he, you'll remember he stepped away last season to examine or briefly to examine the possibility of a sale of Liverpool uh, before eventually returning to his role. And I do wonder with this expanded portfolio that, that Michael Edwards is taking on, this expanded role rather, I, I think it's worth keeping an eye on whether this would allow Mike Gordon to finally step away from FSG. Maybe that's something he's interested in. I think the fact he stepped away briefly and then came back and now this has happened is a really interesting one. Um, and, and as I say, one to, to really keep an eye on whether that is Mike Gordon's opportunity to maybe step away from FSG, maybe even retire um, and, and enjoy time away from the, 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 you know, the busyness that's around running FSG. And, and then whether that gives Edwards the opportunity, his role then is to essentially replace Mike Gordon. Really interesting one, I think, to, to keep an eye on. Now, obviously, these, the, these are the long term concerns, Mike Gordon's future, this multi-club uh, model that Liverpool might be going down. But of course, as I say, the short term real concerns to Liverpool and what they do about the sporting director to get that signed off as soon as possible and then of course the manager and then a summer where that manager will want to do uh, some transfer business I'm sure and it kind of reminds me actually going into this summer I wrote a piece for This Is Anfield touching on this uh, analogy really that you know Liverpool going into this summer they're about to lose Jurgen Klopp it's a big moment for them and it reminded me of a scene in, in Moneyball a great film with Brad Pitt you must all watch it if you haven't seen it which talks about the Oakland Athletics and Billy Bean and his role in, in revitalising them and we know that Fenway Sports Group were very interested in Billy Bean and his analytics model and the way that he approached recruitment in baseball because they attempted to get into the Boston Red Sox and two years later actually after being turned down by him they were they eventually went on to win the World Series for the first time in 86 years using a very very similar model so we know that Moneyball is something they're into and it reminded me of a scene from that as I say where you know Brad Pitt his character he's playing Billy Bean says about the Oakland Athletics he says to the scouts we're about to lose Jason Gamby who's one of their really good players really important player for them and he says look we can't replace him with the budget we've got it's impossible to do but what we can do is recreate him in the aggregate, which is essentially get three players who give you the same things uh, as Giambi did for, for the Elkland Athletics and so not replace him with one player, but try and replace what he brought to the team with three people. And it very much reminded me of the situation Liverpool find themselves going into this summer. Jurgen Klopp is an absolute genius. I think we've seen that over the last few years. But what Liverpool will look to do with appointing Michael Edwards, Richard Hughes next, and maybe Xabi Alonso after that, or that is certainly the aim. Can they recreate Jurgen Klopp in the aggregate? Well, I think that this appointment of Michael Edwards is very much the first step towards that. Let's see if it works out.